again, that Giancarlo Mori, who most recently was at Activision as the production head of the DreamWorks franchise, uh, to explore the convergence, to explore what value we can bring to games and what, what ideas and value games can bring to our movies. Um, even though Giancarlo is based in Los Angeles, um, it doesn't mean that we're going to make our games in Los Angeles. I want to be really clear about that, because that was one of the first things I read in the press. Um, you know, why would Analogic go offshore? It is true, however, and I'm, I'm sorry the minister's gone, even though she's your state minister. Um, it's certainly something we're lobbying to the federal level and, and directly to, uh, to Garrett and Rudd that the game industry in Australia is discriminated against in relation to the film and television industry. In the TV, in the film industry, yay! Um, and, you know, film producers who qualify with Australian content films that qualify as Australian can get up to 40% of their budget rebated. TV producers who can produce, a television, who produce television content which qualifies as Australian can get 20% of their budgets rebated. And the game industry doesn't get any of that support. Now, there's also another tax support for the film industry which is called, um, is, which is to support, support offshore production, which is 15%. But that's fee-for-service business, and, and my focus is on developing and owning IP. And I believe the game industry should get a support level of around the TV or film or somewhere in that, in that region in Australia, so that companies like Animalogic who are developing the IP, investing in it, um, can actually bring the work back to Australia to be produced and ultimately end up developing it here as well. Um, this is an interesting one. Uh, it's a, an American ad for Comcast, and I'm just going to show you a before and after. Um, because I think, you know, it's all about the idea. It's all about character, and it's all about the story you tell and the idea. And I'll show you the, the version of Comcast that we did to sell the idea. But I also want to put out the proposition that the idea can be great, but it also depends on great execution. If you get the marriage of a great idea and good execution, I think you have a winner. A rabbit. A rabbit genetically modified and bred with a panther. A rabbit genetically modified and bred with a panther. With turbines attached. A rabbit slash panther with turbines. Backed by an unusually strong tailwind. On ice. A rabbit panther thingy with turbines and tailwind on ice. Shaved with a cold forge, high glide surgical grade razor. The whole rabbit panther turbine tailwind hairless razor scenario. Driven by an over caffeinated fighter pilot with a lead foot or traveling down a ski jump in Switzerland under better than ideal conditions. Never stop making fast and faster. Comcast high speed internet with power booster. Here it is. A rabbit, a rabbit genetically modified and bred with a panther. A rabbit genetically modified and bred with a panther. With turbines attached. A rabbit slash panther with turbines, backed by an unusually strong tailwind. On ice. A rabbit panther thingy with turbines and tailwind on ice. Shaved with a cold forge, high glide surgical grade razor. The whole rabbit panther turbine tailwind hairless razor scenario. Driven by an over caffeinated fighter pilot with a lead foot, all traveling down a ski jump in Switzerland under better than ideal conditions. Okay, so it gives you, um, I think it demonstrates that it's all about the idea. We could have made that thing look great, like I think we did with the rabbit and the ice and everything else that the guys did in CG. We couldn't have made that, by the way, had we not finished Happy Feet before, because all the technology for fur and feather and ice 
that we developed Happy Feet made that, that, that possible. And we were competing against a whole range of American companies to do it. But at the end of the day, the, the idea was <coughs> really, really critical. So the two go hand in hand. Uh, um, a crossover that's happening, um, I don't know if I've got it here. I can't, um, sorry, technology's challenging me. Um, I thought you'd be interested in seeing um, another kind of creative challenge that we face all the time, which is the technique to support the idea, to, to support unique creative, as opposed to allow the technique to dictate what the idea can be. We, we um, did a test for Happy Feet in the early days with George Miller to show the studio what the film could look like. And we didn't have the pipeline, we didn't have the technology, we didn't have any of it, but we had to cobble something together to make that uh, to realize the idea so a studio could back it to the tune of the millions of dollars, which they did. Um, we did the same for Zack Snyder on 300. He shot some, he sh he shot some live action work. Our art director, Grant Freckleton, uh, art directed the work and we put together a test which, which uh, gave Warner Brothers the confidence to green light the movie. Grant Freckleton then went on to, um, went on to art direct the entire movie with, with Zack, worked with him for three years and is now working with Zach on the next film, Guardians of Kabul, as the art director of that film. Um, so I'll show you some befores and afters on, on 300, just because it's cool, but it's also interesting to see how it broke new ground in terms of technique. But it did it because it had a unique vision, it had a point of difference, it had its own creative style. It didn't do it because it was a, a cheap technique, it didn't do it because the technique drove the idea. It was a Frank Miller graphic novel that had a particular look and that was the way Zach wanted to translate the look to cinema, and, and it spoke to audiences. No, it's In terms of meeting, meeting design challenges and creating popular culture, Simon Whiteley, who's one of our art directors and production designers, designed the Matrix Code, amongst many other things that he's worked on, uh, for Larry and Andy Wachowski. So he designed the code, our software developers developed the streaming code and developed it in a 3D fashion so it could have depth in the screen. Uh, Simon then went on to art direct Happy Feet, and he's now production designing Zack Snyder's next movie. So these, these guys have got a great idea, can, can cross over into all sorts of different, different uh, uh, genres, as well as different media. Um, this was the iconic shot out of Matrix. Somebody loaded it on. 
Um, and that's the idea of the future, of course. 